My name is Faith, and I have some stories to tell. I'm a Boxer Bulldog mix. My mom and dad met me while I was being cared for at the Best Friends Animal Society in Utah and decided they wanted to adopt me. Now, I live in Muncie, Indiana with Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary founders Pamela and Mike. In fact, I'm the ambassador for Grateful Rescue. It's a pretty sweet life. Sometimes I help my dad at the office, while other times I just demand attention from my mom. Tonight, we want you to gather around and listen to fun, interesting stories. We call it Faith's Book Nook. Each week, we pick a local celebrity or special person in the community to read a children's book that has an animal theme. We live stream it here each week. To be honest, I'm not sure what a live stream means. Anyways, make sure you're in your comfy chair because we're about to listen to a great story together at Faith's Book Nook. and I am the owner of Westwind Farm and Fiber. And this is my daughter, Lovelyn, and she is holding Bo, the French Angora rabbit, that is our pet. And today I'm going to be reading How to Catch the Easter Bunny, written by Adam Wallace and Andy Uckerton. I've been working long and hard with all my peeps and crew We've made the eggs and now I'm here to bring them all to you. My real name's a secret. My friends call me EB. My special job means I must hide my true identity. Yes, I'm the Easter Bunny. I'm coming to your home. If you have Easter spirit, then you just might see me roam. There's the Easter Bunny. This first trap is quite simple. Just carrots on a plate. I'm lightning fast to catch me. You'll need some better bait. A hole that's covered by a rug will never cause me strife. Have you forgotten what I am? Burrowing's my life. Now this is much more like it, a fully lit dance floor. I'll do a little hip hop, then dash behind the door. This next trap is quite clever, made by brilliant engineers, but it's hard to catch a bunny who has supersonic ears. You want to catch me for my eggs and magic basket too, but I've been hiding Easter eggs since 1682. This trap nearly gets me, but check out all my hops. Watch me dodge the flying fish and cherry yogurt pups. I switch my size from two feet tall to something small and gray. Your Easter spirit is so strong, you see me right away. I leave so many Easter treats, no children will be sad. But when they've seen that I've escaped, They'll all be happy mad. The Bunny Tumbler 2.0 sure takes me for a spin, but I've got lucky rabbit's feet. I know I'll always win. With all the treats delivered to children big and small, I've got one special stop to make to my favorite kid of all. See you next year, Easter Bunny. Thank you for joining us on the book neck tonight. 
and thank you for supporting Grateful Rescue. She's a Viking girl. His name is Bo. And her name is Bo. What does Bo like to eat? Um, carrots and wine. And hay. Mm -hmm. What's it like taking care of a bunny? Mm, you have to comb their hair, equip their claws, mm -hmm. and feed it and water it. Uh, does your bunny ever misbehave? No. <laughs> so yeah, so as a parent, what should people know before they get the, their child a, a rabbit? So rabbits are somewhat mischievous. So you need to make sure and when you have them in a cage that it is secure because if it's not, the rabbit for sure will find a way out and surprise you. Um, and then also uh, making sure they have plenty of, especially angora rabbits have to have plenty of fresh hay um, to keep their digestive system clear because they do lick themselves like all rabbits and pets do um, and they sometimes ingest some of the fur and so that helps keep their digestive system clear. Um, and Angora rabbits are a more heightened maintenance breed. Um, a lot of your short haired rabbits are a little easier to maintain and I would suggest maybe trying a short haired rabbit before jumping into the Angora, which requires a lot more maintenance. And it's always good to have an adult <laughs> pair with you with picking out a rabbit, being able to, to help you so our farm is located just outside of Yorktown, Indiana, and um, our farm is a, a heritage farm experience. We have a variety of different rabbits, different goats, um, and sheep, and as well as alpacas, ducks, and chickens. And um, when you visit our farm, you get to have a very hands-on experience. Um, all our barn, our barn is open. We have all kinds of activities for families to do, playgrounds, a bounce house, a pioneer village. Um, and then we have demonstrations on what we do with the fiber animals we raise. And in the fall, sweetheart. In the fall, we have pumpkins and hay rides. So, and all of that is included with admission to our farm. So um, they can go to, they can follow us on Facebook at Westwind Farm and Fiber or go to our website, www.westwindfarmandfiber.com. And the, the one thing that makes our farm visits very unique is it truly is hands-on. We allow kids to actually hold the rabbits. Um, they can hold a chicken. They get to take our sheep or goats on a little walk and um, feed the animals. It's, it's really a hands-on experience with animals that were all raised um, here by my family. And um, my kiddos do a lot of work on making sure they're taking a lot of fun. What a fun place to go. Oh my I gosh, prepare. right? <laughs> How come Jason didn't invite us to go along and see the <laughs> beautiful rabbit? <laughs> she is she is kind of a neighbor of mine and I and I saw the alpacas and um and the great farm she has. She's got so many nice animals out there. Beautiful spread in the country. So and oh. she's got a little shop that she sells soaps and candles and fibers and, and all kinds of fun stuff. That is so cool. I just, I mean, those, those Angora rabbits, you just want to just, I mean, there's, you just want to like squeeze them, right? Like they just feel I like they're know. so soft and so cute. I know that there are, you know, rules about, you know, rabbits are, in some ways they're kind of like cats. Like they're going to tell you whether or not they're a, a cuddle uh, bunny or whether or not they're, you know, just going to kind of hang out with you. So yes, you, you, you've got some other fun facts about uh, uh, rabbits. And if you're just tuning in uh, and you missed the, uh, the story, this is a very special Easter version of the book nook. We are going to, uh, we're going to replay the story for you here uh, in just a little bit. But first, Pamela, tell us some more things we should know about rabbits. Fun facts about rabbits. 
Okay, well, first of all, this is something I did not know until I started reading, was the rabbit babies are called kittens. Oh! And kittens, like kitty cat kittens. I did not know that. I know. And um, and I heard them refer to this, um, this thing called binking, and I thought it was just a name they made up. But it turns out when a, when a bunny's binking, he is celebrating. He jumps up in the air, he twists around, he kicks his leg, it's like, he kicks his legs. It's like a, a joy dance. And I remember when we were at the Best Friends Sanctuary getting our training, one of the gals said that these bunnies are binking and they're so excited about it. And, and you could see the action and kind of think, ah, oh, it looks like binking. <laughs> but it's really a thing. So it's called binking. Um, and then I found out that they are social creatures. They really don't like to be alone as bunny rabbits. They like to have friends. They like to have other bunny rabbit friends. Um, their lifespan is about five to 10 years old, but the oldest one on record is 17. And um, the biggest one on record is 55 whopping pounds. What? His name is Ralph and he eats $90 in food a week. Oh my goodness. I do. And they have 360 degree vision and they have un, um, 180 degree ear range and, and they can pinpoint the location of where sounds are coming from. Wow. Isn't that interesting? That is so amazing. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we've we never had a, a house rabbit, although I saw that my husband put in the comments even though he's logged in as me, so it didn't work for him. It says <laughs> that I want to place my vote for a house rabbit. That is my husband saying that. Uh, and I have six cats uh, and myself who will veto you at the moment. <laughs> well, let me tell you, another thing we learned at Best Friends Sanctuary is that um, a lot of times bunny rabbits do get turned in, surrendered, um, because they, they're they higher maintenance than really one would think. They, I mean... I had one for a short time and um, and asked my niece to take it because you would clean their cage out and like I'm talking an hour later, looks like you hadn't cleaned it out all week. And um, so so they are high maintenance. And um, and like like uh, Kylie said, the 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 longer hair you get, the more maintenance that's going to be um, something interesting. The best friend sanctuary does. And, and we'll be doing that, too, when we get our um, when we get our critter stations open is um, a lot of times they buy, uh, people will buy bunnies um, for Easter gifts and then they return. They surrender them like a week later. So because they realize that it's too much and the and the novelty of having a bunny for Easter has worn off. So what they do at Best Friends Sanctuary is they rent you a bunny for the week. And um, so you can get a bunny out of the sanctuary and take it home. Of course, if you if you um, pass the application stage and then if you don't if you don't think you want the bunny, if it's too much trouble, You've not gone and bought one. You, you just take it back to the sanctuary. But if it's one that you think you can take care of and um, and you love him, then you may adopt it. So I, th I think that's a very cool promotion, rent an Easter bunny for a week. <laughs> it's, it's so much better than what happens, you know, to the shelters. And not every shelter is equipped to take in those rabbits. We actually, we have a, a, a rabbit rescue here in Indiana that is specifically because of the, the fact that people get them and then go, oh, wait a second, this is not what I was expecting. So Indiana House Rabbit Society uh, if you have any uh, questions, but they get very busy this time of year because of the fact that mm -hmm. people think you're going to get a little bunny. And when you see them outside, they seem like they just kind of sit there. Uh, but uh, they're at, they, they are uh, very, very active. We have three in our backyard right now and they play like kittens like they chase mm -hmm. each other around and they run and they run oh yeah they, yeah i mean they're fun but boy it's a you know with any any pet it's a commitment but i think in particular people don't realize when you adopt a a, a rabbit that they have got some pretty specific needs right uh, and that's oh, another thing i just learned that they um they do require love and companionship just like cats and dogs do they want they want their owner's attention and um, they like to play. So 
Yes. Well, we like to play here too. We actually like to play bingo quite a oh, bit. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And we want to remind everybody that bingo is next Sunday night. We are very excited to welcome Dixie the Praying Aww. Dog. Uh, so great that she and her human Brian are going to share some time and it'll be exciting to talk with them because they are actually filming season two of the pack. Dickie, mm -hmm. uh, Dixie mm -hmm. is a part of the pack on Amazon prime. I believe they're in Germany right now. So I don't know wow. if they're coming back or we're going to be connecting with them in Germany, but, uh, Dixie the Praying Dog joining us as our special guest for Grateful Bingo. You can get signed up now at gratefulbingo.com. And please tell your friends. It's so much fun. And the more people, the better. Uh, and we have another special guest. And I think she's sitting with you right now being a good girl. <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm so excited to have Dixie, I want to say, because I've seen little spots on her on TV that she, she greets the um, veterans when they come in. And um, and what an honor. She just really lifts the spirits. Um, and so look at this. She's falling asleep. This is Molly and um, Molly's 12 years old and um, her owner passed away. She's our newest intake. And um, she's just a sweet little uh, timid, long haired chihuahua that's going to be needing a home soon. As soon as we get her checked out, we've only had her a couple of days. But um, Oh, isn't she precious? She's she, so sweet. <laughs> all she wants, all she wants is to sit on your lap. That's all. That she just wants to be next to a human. So, um, and since she's a senior, we would love for a, um, a fellow senior to adopt her. And then you've got a little, um, a little one on your lap all day long. And that's yeah. what a lot of seniors ask for. And um, another good thing about her, a lot of times little, little dogs might get under uh, the feet of people. And, and that could be a hazard for seniors. But um, Molly doesn't. She she walks a good five feet away behind you, um, but she's always with me. So it's she's really precious. So Aww. you'll be seeing more about Molly. And um, I think that's what um, our fundraiser for is for on Bingo. Uh, with our senior to senior program, we um, we adopt these dogs to seniors um, at no charge um, for companionship. And so um, donations help because they do need they do need to go to the vet and they do need to get um, on their proper medications or whatever they need. Um, so um, your donations during bingo will help um, supply these little seniors to um, seniors in need for companionship. Oh my goodness, I'm just falling in love with her. I think she's watching you, KJ. <laughs> I'm right watching right. her too. <laughs> uh, well, we are excited to learn more about her and uh, amazing work, Pamela, with the, the Senior to Senior program. I, I feel like as we've been following along with, uh, with Grateful on Facebook that we have just, you know, we've seen a lot of seniors lately a lot of a lot of pets coming in whose owners have passed and it's mm -hmm. such a sad thing for them to you know lose their companion and then be confused and not know where they are yeah um, you know and you're just like okay well come on with me and we're gonna find <laughs> you the best forever home and you're doing it so it's we're doing it and they're it, and they're, they're they're so sad and scared at first a lot of these seniors got them when they were puppies and so their whole life they've been with with their owners um but dogs do have an amazing way of, of adjusting after a few days especially when they know they're safe and loved and um and uh, so she's calmed down quite a bit she's very oh, look at she's smiling oh my gosh I, I can't I cannot I cannot with you Molly oh I my cannot God, I love her no matter how big your smile gets I had six cats that would not make you smile Molly we're gonna find you a good home <laughs> Look at turning on the charm to you. <laughs> so, and of course, you can donate now if you want to assist with the uh, the senior to senior program and all of the amazing programs that Grateful Rescue uh, is is providing to the community. Grateful is is not only about helping the pets, but it really is about helping the people in the community and bringing pets and people together. So, the senior to senior program is very important. Uh, next week, and we'll learn a lot more about the vet program and how Grateful helps 
uh, veterans and helps active military who need a place to board their pets when they get called up. So we're going to be talking about another one of those programs that doesn't doesn't necessarily happen without mm -hmm. uh, without donations, without people like you saying, "I want to I want to help this." Uh, let's see. Dave uh, will be paying Molly's adoption fee, so that will be covered. Aww. Oh, that is so oh, great. Carolyn, we love you. She's recovering from a hip surgery, so best wishes, Carolyn. Oh, we love her. She's always Aww. such a good supporter. That is and so thank you, good. Dave. <laughs> so everything else will go to help the uh, the medical bills of, of Molly and her fellow seniors who are coming into Grateful Rescue right now. So remember, uh, if you're learning about Grateful Bingo for the first time, it will be next Sunday night at eight o'clock. We do it every second Sunday. We always have a special guest like Dixie the Praying Dog. And it is free to play and it is really easy to play. Um, mm -hmm. I have people ask me like, do I need to download an app or a program or I couldn't figure out how to play bingo online. Actually, you really can. It's you click on that link and it you get your cards and there's a button to donate and there's the button to press hopefully when you win and get bingo <laughs> it's uh it's really really fun and we would love to have you with us uh and you gotta Sunday. hit that button quick a lot of times people think they've got the bingo and they hit the button and then when they roll out the name it's like wait a minute that wasn't me <laughs> yes yes and it's all kinds of fun prizes as well i was seeing pictures uh this past week of our winners who got their prizes in the mail and they were so excited about it so okay. please please uh you put it on your calendar set a reminder next sunday night grateful bingo right here uh streaming where you're watching right now uh and pamela uh, would you be good if we went ahead uh for the people who have just tuned in who missed that cute cute bunny and missed oh, that yes. Easter bunny story should we play Absolutely. it again yes thank you kylie and thank you loveland that sweet little girl her name's loveland she was just a doll she is yeah. fantastic. You can tell she <laughs> absolutely loves that beautiful uh, bunny that is her pet, and she takes yes. good care of it. So if you missed it, here we go again. Remember, we'll be back next week, 8 o'clock, for a grateful bingo. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your Easter. So great to see you, Pamela. And, and you as well. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. I, I love spending it with you. All right. Absolutely, you too. See you next week. My name is Kylie Eller and I am the owner of Westwind Farm and Fiber and this is my daughter Loveland and she is holding Bo, the French Angora Rabbit that is our pet. And today I'm going to be reading How to Catch the Easter Bunny, written by Adam Wallace and Andy Uckerton. I've been working long and hard with all my peeps and crew. We've made the eggs and now I'm here to bring them all to you. My real name's a secret. My friends call me EB. My special job means I must hide my true identity. Yes, I'm the Easter Bunny. I'm coming to your home. If you have Easter spirit, then you just might see me roam. There's the Easter Bunny. This first trap is quite simple. Just carrots on a plate. I'm lightning fast to catch me. You'll need some better bait. A hole that's covered by a rug will never cause me strife. Have you forgotten what I am? Burrowing's my life. Now this is much more like it, a fully lit dance floor. I'll do a little hip hop, then dash behind the door. 
This next trap is quite clever, made by brilliant engineers, but it's hard to catch a bunny who has supersonic ears. You want to catch me for my eggs and magic basket too? But I've been hiding Easter eggs since 1682. This trap nearly gets me, but check out all my hops. Watch me dodge the flying fish and cherry yogurt pups. I switch my size from two feet tall to something small and gray. Your Easter spirit is so strong, you see me right away. I leave so many Easter treats, no children will be sad. But when they've seen that I've escaped, they'll all be happy mad. The Bunny Tumbler 2.0 sure takes me for a spin, but I've got lucky rabbit's feet. I know I'll always win. With all the treats delivered to children big and small, I've got one special stop to make to my favorite kid of all. See you next year, Easter Bunny. Thank you for joining us on the book neck tonight, and thank you for supporting Grateful Rescue. She's a Frankie Bob. His name is Bob. And her name is Bo. What does Bo like to eat? Um, carrots and wine. Okay. What's it like taking care of a bunny? Mm, you have to comb their hair, equip their claws, mm -hmm. and feed it in water. Uh, does your bunny ever misbehave? No. <laughs> so yeah, so as a parent, what should people know before they get the, their child a, a rabbit? So rabbits are somewhat mischievous, so you need to make sure um, when you have them in a cage that it is secure, because if it's not, the rabbit for sure will find a way out and surprise you. Um, and then also uh, making sure they have plenty of especially angora rabbits have to have plenty of fresh hay um, to keep their digestive system clear because they do lick themselves like all rabbits and pets do um, and they sometimes ingest some of the fur and so that helps keep their digestive system clear um, and angora rabbits are a more heightened maintenance breed um, a lot of your short-haired rabbits are a little easier to maintain and i would suggest maybe trying a short-haired rabbit before jumping into the Angora, which requires a lot more maintenance. And it's always good to have an adult <laughs> pair with you with picking out a rabbit, being able to, to help you. So our farm is located just outside of Yorktown, Indiana. And um, our farm is a, a heritage farm experience. We have a variety of different rabbits, different goats um, and sheep, and as well as alpacas, ducks, and chickens. And um, when you visit our farm, you get to have a very hands-on experience. Um, all our, bar our barn is open. We have all kinds of activities for families to do, playgrounds, a bounce house, a pioneer village. Um, and then we have demonstrations on what we do with the fiber animals we raise. And in the fall, sweetheart. In the fall, we have pumpkins and hay rides. So, and all of that is included with admission to our farm. So um, they can go to, they can follow us on Facebook at Westwind Farm and Fiber, or go to our website, www.westwindfarmandfiber.com. And the, the one thing that makes our farm visits very unique is it truly is hands-on. We allow kids to actually hold the rabbits. Um, they can hold a chicken. They get to take our sheep or goats on a little walk and um, feed the animals. It's, it's really a hands-on experience with animals that were all raised um, here by my family. 
and um, my kiddos do a lot of work on making sure they're taking a lot of fun.